caution is advised. Hey everyone, this video is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering you a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial membership. All you need to do is go to audibletrial.com forward slash bgunlocked. The link is in the description below, and now enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and Brad and I are doing our top 20 anticipated games for 2020. Uh, the Probably by the time this comes up, uh, year of 2019 will be over, and uh, more games to come, because there's always more games. <laughs> um, so here are the 20 that we picked. Um, now, since these are games that are not out. Uh, these are games that we speculate will be coming out at some point in the year 2020. Now, that's always subject to change with Kickstarter dates and yep. just anything can come up. The world might end. You never know. But, but yeah, so we will just go through our list and we'll start with, we'll start with you. <laughs> Serve me. How All many right. crossover do you think we'll have? I was counting that earlier. I had thrown out a number of like five... You think we'll have five crossover? Yeah. I think we will have... No, that's just a blink. <laughs> I think we'll have 20. <laughs> no. Um, I think we will probably have... The, there's no one. I think we will have t three. Three? Yeah. All right. Well, my number 20 <clears throat> was actually on my anticipated 2019 list. Okay. And it never did come out. It was a Kickstarter that... Uh, drug on and didn't quite make it out this year. Yeah. And I don't even know when it's actually coming out. <laughs> You're and just it, hoping it's next year. Well, I, I mean, it, they're still producing it, and it's from a decent designer. I'm assuming it's coming out. Um, it is Planet Apocalypse. Oh, yeah. The Remember Sandy Peterson game. Yep. 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 I did see that. Sandy at Peterson Games. I think. Is the base game not out yet? No. Oh, okay. It is not. Okay. Yeah, uh, so Planet Apocalypse, it, um, it's kind of got this whole, you know, hell is coming, uh, they're invading our world, all this good stuff. Um, it's a cooperative game, tower defense, you're yep. protecting the heart of your area, and this, all these crazy looking miniature hell beasts are coming at you, and you're, yep. you are With protecting that. your... With that yeah, weird ass board, yeah, yeah, it's 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 very strange um, setup. It's uh, yeah, and the minis are very disturbing, like incredibly sure. disturbing. And sure. I don't know what's taken it so long. Um, because uh, well, because like you know, think about like a Tainted Grail and all those. I mean, mm -hmm. those kickstarters were a year or so after this one yeah and already the, delivered the, yep you know yep and so, Sandy, i mean what's his company it's peterson games so okay it's, so it's a i don't know how many his company has done yeah you know to know if it's but um but anyway like if you like cooperative tower defense style games with kind of some grotesque art Try out Planet Apocalypse. <laughs> when it comes out. Be out in 2020. Yeah, when it comes out in 15 <laughs> years. Um, all right, good deal. So I'm just organizing my my list. But my number 20 is a game that was on Kickstarter uh, uh, this year, but should be coming out next year called Titans. So Titans, and I have it on my on my phone here, um, is a territory control miniatures game. Um, but it's set in like the it's like uh, what they put is historical fantasy of 17th century Europe. Basically, you control like a bunch of like titans that go that go into battle. Um, it says it revolves around a unique yet simple order card mechanics. Uh, use a shared deck of order cards that will allow them to recruit units, awake the nation's power, and move their armies across the game board. So it just seems kind of it's gonna be one of those like hand management like. Uh, programming games is what it, it's starting to sound like with yeah. the with the order cards um, and area control, but the theme is really what gripped me. And like you kind of have these. Let's see if I can. Yeah, so you have like your little people, like your your regular units, but then you're gonna have these titans overboard. Right. So similar feel of like you know Blood Rage or or Rising Sun in the sense of like the monsters and then your regular units. But there was another game also that came out called Titans. Uh, on Kickstarter, and it was a completely separate like Euro game. It was 
this one I think yeah this is the one that's by the guys that made Valhalla a Pol- it's a Polish company um, oh really yeah okay but, uh, they made Valhalla that you have up there oh Okay. It's the same, same, oh, yep. the same you, design. Everything. You are correct. Yep. Yeah. Lucas Wozniak. Yeah. yeah they're, it's a Polish game company, and they. Good deal. Okay. Well, I haven't played Valhalla yet, but you have. Yeah. You, you like it, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, he's, he's a good designer. They so. Do a good job. Well, that's 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 a good deal. I hate fucking. This is a seven point eight already. Amazing how the game's not even out yet. Yeah. But, but yeah. So I mean, it. I like area control. I like hand management. I think the art on the box looks really fucking cool. So, and if if his design in for Valhalla is uh, anything to say about this, should be a pretty good game. So that's my number twenty, Titans. My number nineteen was a Kickstarter. Okay, yeah, that's going to get repetitive. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, can we just go ahead and say that probably all of these are Kickstarter? <laughs> uh, not all of mine. No, um, a majority. Easily. I'm actually pretty sure all of mine are Kickstarter. Um, this is a come on. Release. Well, that's the thing is like because the anticipated ones, like a lot of companies don't like that aren't on go- going on Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Like they usually are like, oh, by the way, here it is. You know, yeah. so it's kind of hard to yeah, know what's true. coming. Um, this is a come on game. Uh, Eric Lang was one of the people to help with this one. Um, it's based. It's it's a Nordic theme. Based on these books, these chronicles, it's called the Trudvang, Trudvang Legends. I remember seeing that, and for <clears> some <throat> reason, was that the one that got a lot of shit during its Kickstarter well, campaign? Kinda. And I don't. Of, I don't yeah. remember why, but I remember everyone was like, like shit in their pants over like how angry they were. Yeah, and I don't know a whole lot about it. I just remember it was one of the one I didn't end up backing it, but I, it's one that I definitely want to mm-hmm. want to try out. But it has sweet ass minis and everything and it's it's a story driven game okay um it says it's uh it's based on the swedish rpg trudvang chronicles so it's it's based uh, i guess the lore is on yeah i got i got no idea for that one um but it's it says it thrusts players into a cycle of epic sagas in which their achievements not only change the world itself but the very rules by which gods people and nature interact amen to that so it's a I, it almost sounds like a legacy type game. Okay. Because the way things change, now I don't know if that means like permanently sure. legacy or what. I feel I like said, that permanent thing is kind of going away, yeah. and now it seems like legacy esque. Um, especially when you're charging as much for this <laughs> stuff. That's true. But um, but yeah, it, it, you know, it, I like that whole Norse mythology stuff anyway. Sure. Um, the minis look pretty solid. It's it's you know with with come on putting it out their minis have been doing yeah. pretty decent Eric Lang is part of this of course he's in their their payroll so right um, he's pretty much going to be doing all their stuff right but um but like the last thing it says here is you know is heroes the, the heroes that you are uh, they follow a path of destiny they're following a path of destiny will even become historical fixtures as they become kings guild masters or even gods so you okay, care so. the heroes you control progress and can become gods or okay. kings or something throughout the stories. It's it was cool. kind of intriguing a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's um, that yeah. was one I, I completely stayed away from. Um, I don't know why it just it didn't grab me. And yeah. like I, I mean, now whenever it comes to Simon, I'm just kind of like eh, like whatever. Like you guys, okay, I don't need another. I don't need Starcadia quests. I don't need uh, fucking what was there. Didn't they? Didn't they just do another one? Another one on Kickstarter? It wasn't Resident Evil. It was Night, Night of the Living, the Living Dead. Dead. Yeah, the Night of the Living yeah, Dead. Yeah, I was like, oh, Zombie Side. Like, I don't fucking care. Oh, Zombie Side. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, well, you know, you everyone who likes those, by all means, enjoy them. I am not interested. All right. Awesome. Awesome. My number nineteen is actually a Ryan Lockett game, and it is Sleeping Gods. Um. So, Sleeping Gods uh, is kind of like... It's like a seafaring kind of game where you are like on the ship. And now, obviously, it's in his, his world. But, uh, yeah, so it's up to you and three friends become Captain Sophie Odessa and her crew uh, on the steamship The Manticore. Work together, so it's like a survival kind of exploration game. I don't think it's the same uh, thing as, like... Uh, 
near and far or above and below. Right. I don't. I can't remember if there's going to be a like a exploration book to this, but it does say it's a campaign game. Uh, it can last as long as you want. When you're ready to take a break, you mark your progress on a journey log sheet. Make it easy to return to the same place. Um, is an atlas game. Each page. Oh, that's right. It has its own book with like right. similar to actually what like Plat Hat does, but it's also near and far did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Each page of the atlas represents only a small portion of the world you can explore. When you reach the edge of a page you want to continue in the same direction, you simply turn to a new page and sail onward. On- onward. Um, yeah, I mean, I like Ryan Lockett games. Like, typically, like, either... I mean, I, I guess I should only say I really like two of them, Above and Below and Near and Far. Um, I think this can be a really interesting exploration one what Islebound really should have been because mm-hmm. Islebound kind of missed the mark there wasn't really a whole lot to do City of Iron I don't really care for but um, like his past two exploration story driven kind of games have always been really fun like whims- not really whimsical but light hearted fantasy um, so if it is about resource management and survival I mean Seventh Continent I love so in a Ryan Lockett kind of world I think I would really enjoy it plus once again I mean a lot of these I'm uh, at least, uh, especially on a higher list, I'm mainly going off of also their artwork. And that looks terrifying because it is a boat and there's some fucking creature that's like right underneath it. And that just, I mean, that is cool, but also horrifying. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, uh, I mean, yeah, that's that's really my number 19. All right. <clears throat> my number 18 is a video game port okay. to the board game world called Company of Heroes. Gotcha. Okay. I don't know if you've really looked it up or anything. Nope. This game caught me because of the miniatures. Um, I like Memoir 44. Um, I like, you know, how you have your military, your battles, historical battles, and they'd have you set up, and Mm -hmm. it was all movement. Um, The difference with that game and what a game I wanted to try was that one was a card-driven. You could only put activate units in that area. The, uh, the card you played well and with this game uh there's a fog of war element to it okay so you don't know what's you need know, what you can't see when you're not getting that close to it you know yeah uh, but there's different i think the the actual if you backed on kickstarter i think you get four countries worth of factions okay i mean and if you like like if you look that's kind of what like you get a whole Unit tanks, okay, soldiers, all that stuff, mm-hmm. um, and there's all these missions, and you go through, and you, it's it's strategic squad combat. I mean, it's so it's it's like a war game. Yeah, I don't know if you played. I played Memoir Forty Four. I don't I, like it. Have you played the video game? No, uh, com- no, I'm not. See, I I played the the video games of this. Okay, and. I think it's it's kind of like remember when I had Jagged Alliance on my list mm-hmm. and I went this this is kind of my Jagged Alliance of this yeah. I think it's actually the company that's doing some bad crow games I think they've done other stuff okay um so I'm expecting more out of this one and Jagged Alliance that like hole in the wall fucking game that no one's ever played except you maybe yeah. other people have heard of Company of Heroes yeah <laughs> actually I guess bad crow games really hasn't done they did Met Command. But they really haven't done gotcha. a lot of stuff. But the miniatures are what caught me in this one. Uh, it, you know, it's having the four factions. You can go in and you can do squad. You, know, you, you can actually team up because there's two. Oh, for, I see. You know, and do stuff. So is it going to be like scenario-based, um, similar to yeah, I think there, Yeah. From okay. what I understand, it's going to be, yeah, there's going to be like actual battles that you're going to have set okay. up and stuff and the allies and the, you know, okay. Axis and stuff like that. And it's... I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see what it ends up doing. It, right. it looks. Hopefully, it does better than my last right. video game port. <laughs> I'd really but. like to uh, go back to the our twenty nineteen ones and like see it. Like, oh man, which which ones ended up being that dog true. shit? I still have mine on my phone. I have to look. Through. Yeah, I'd have to go look through wherever I have <laughs> my list. Okay, my number eighteen is a game that you actually turned me on to for the Kickstarter, but you actually ended up backing out, and I believe I went all in for it. Huh? You know, we, which one we is? managed to make each other spend money, right? <laughs> um, and that is Ignite. So Ignite seems to be kind of like a deck building skirmish game. Is kind of how how I I took it, and how it's kind of revolving around like more semi realism with like 
uh, with like conditions and, and terrain and things like that. Like, um, like it says here, dueling deck builder where players battle miniatures across a variable, var variably built board. Um, each unit has three hit points. When your unit takes a point of damage, you have a dagger <laughs> that you actually... Yeah, I'm going to end up kicking myself for not backing that one, I have a feeling. Uh, the player who inflicts the last point of damage keeps the unit as a trophy. Each card in your hand can be played for its honor value, allowing you to buy more cards, or for its battle effect. Um, there are four special types of terrain. Village allows you to purchase cards. Forest protects you from range attacks. Water necessary for certain powerful spells. And lava, if you're pushing the lava, your unit immediately dies. So... This one <coughs> kind of sounded like where you would actually use the things around you to enhance things, and that's kind of what what took me in is like it's not just oh we're on a we're on a map um, and that's just gonna be you know what it is, but here it's like oh if I'm actually in a forest I get stuff. If like I mentioned there with the Kickstarter and everything, it adds, added more. But water I could use to like freeze over, so I can walk over water. Mm -hmm. um, so things like that. I think the card play will be pretty neat. What what kind of might make me hesitant is I'm not the biggest skirmish fan. Mm -hmm. Like, like I don't mind skirmishes in theory, but they always seem kind of like a what's the point. But I do like like one v one, or I do like battle games. So um, I'm hoping that the card play is actually going to be dynamic enough to make mm -hmm. it feel not like a oh I play a card skirmish like a quick battle thing, but maybe more like a advanced fantasy war game right so yeah this is one that you turned me on to it seems like it's going to be kind of their own immersive world you control factions and things like that that have unique abilities so i'm i'm intrigued i'm, I'm thinking it might it might be pretty neat the dagger thing is also <laughs> what what could yeah. be like it's gimmicky <laughs> but i mean i think that's kind of cool you might have your own colored ones right, as, yeah, i think like, you do yeah so yeah so um Ignite, my number 18. All right. My number 17, we made fun of a little bit ago, but it's on my list because, damn it, I like the IP, and okay, I don't think I'll own this game, but I'm going to play it if somebody else backs it. <laughs> and it's Night of the Living Dead, a zombie oh. <laughs> side game from Simon, or Kwan. Yeah, you um, can guarantee I will not be playing right. it. <laughs> I, um, zombie side, I, I never played Black Plague, so I'm assuming this is going to be running off the newer rules. I was they, really they zombie side so. second edition, and that fixed up all those rules. And they That's made. true. So I'm, I'm assuming that they're going to clean it up. I just went down that rabbit hole once, and I don't want to go down it again. Um, I've played the game, and it's... Yeah, Black Plague, Black Plague was really good. Right, and I'm assuming... That they're gonna that the second edition of regular zombie side is gonna be solid now too with they fixed up their yep. rules, um, but anyway, this is zombie side, but with the over theming and everything of the original Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, black all the old black and white has the same characters, story the scenarios run off the movie storyline. Who did Resident Evil? Was that that was Steam Forge? Right, Resident Evil 2, the board game? Yes. Okay, I couldn't remember yes. if it was uh, Simon or not. Yeah. Um, Are they just running out of ideas? Like, Because it's, it's like, oh, hey, here's Zombie Side, Zombie Side 2nd Edition. Oh, well, Night of the Living Dead, but it's Zombie Side. They've been talking about Night of the Living Dead for quite a while. Okay. Because I remember back, it's been at least a year or two, they started, I, I heard them talking about it. On okay. A, I was watching and listening to a podcast. They were gotcha. jabbering. So I, I think it's just something they probably just like coincidental timing. Yeah. Like... Well, and it's not. It's not. It's not a coincidence that they're still they're making Zombie Side Second Edition right now because mm -hmm. that that ended what a month or two something ago. Something like that. Yeah. And this one's done now. Yeah. So and they had the exact same. Or <laughs> so it's almost like this could have been an add-on for Second Edition. Yeah. But they're selling it separate, but they can be making it at the same time because the zombies are probably going to be the same and the boards are the same color. And it's, it has the whole same layout of the deal. They're just going to have the, yep. these. So it's yep. surprise. This is my shocked face that Come On is grabbing <laughs> for money. <laughs> because the, I think this could have been a deluxe expansion to Zombie Side Season edition. 2. Yep. But, yep. Yep. You know, I, mean, I, I still want to try it just because I love. I, I'm a zombie fan. Yeah. And when there's a game, uh, a game coming out with one of the greatest zombie movies ever, I'll try it. Right. Yeah. And I've never, I've actually never seen <coughs> Night of the Living Dead. So I, uh, I mean, I had no, no interest. I'm not saying there aren't IPs that grab me, but it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Simon, it's just like, God, 
just they they need to be innovative at this point, and they <laughs> almost never seem to be anymore. But we'll see. We'll see. It could be good. I don't know. Then we'll see. My number 17 is a game that uh, I actually watched Rado do a playthrough of, and I was like, oh, that looks pretty solid. And with my love for game, like solid worker placement games like Teotihuacan Walk On and things like that, um, it, it grabbed me, and I'm hoping it's pretty good. But that is Man... I'm going to butcher this. Manchukuo? Manchuko? Manchuko? It is Legacy Under Siege, Manchuko. Sure. It is set in northeast China in 1932. A new government has disarmed its people and condemns assembly as intent to undermine the state. So, says here, it's a worker placement game played over a series of rounds. Uh, where there's a day phase where you assign your students to task about town, and a night phase where you recruit new students and train them within secret. Um, so... Day phase, you assign groups of students to different locations to take the action at that location to scale with the number of students you assign. So similar to like the architects where you can place more people to make the thing more powerful. I really like that because it makes your workers and things like feel more useful in like be worker placements. The thing is, is like when you just place one somewhere, they're, they're a slow burn. You just slowly go now. With Teoti walk on, it's like boom. There's a level six there, or architects. Boom. There's fifteen. Um, like being able to do more with your workers just always feels satisfying. So, like that's what it sounds like it's gonna do here. And then at the end of the day phase, students you assign to different locations will count towards your influence. If you have the most influence, you will recruit students, which then you will turn into the night phase to be able to basically. I'm assuming turn them into like warriors or something and Probably. get and get points for it um, because a, you're in like a condemned China Chinese area where now you're being you're being oppressed. Um, like I only watched the the short run through that that Rado did, um, but he raved about it. And typically, when it comes to worker placement games, like Rado and I tend to align pretty well on so. I think Manch Manchuko could be really interesting. And it's a theme that I haven't seen done anywhere. So right. um, these lists are always kind of difficult to do because it's based off speculation, what they say, and just kind of how it looks. So judging books by their cover here. Uh, but that's my number 17, Manchuko. All right. Manchuku -koo -koo -koo. My number 16 is a Gray Fox game. Um, it was a Kickstarter, got canceled after a little bit, and then got restarted back up and succeeded. Um, and it is After the Empire. I stayed away from that one. Yeah. Um, I did too, because I was, I was back, I was in it the first time, they backed out, they made it the second. There wasn't, <clears throat> I don't know, I, if, if... That's the one with, like, the 3D Where you build towers, your, you build yeah. your castles, yeah. yeah. And it's, so it's a, it's a worker placement, resource management, um... It takes place after the fall of Rome, mm -hmm. uh, like in the Dark Ages. Um, so pretty much, like each turn you take is supposed to be a season. Yeah, simulate a season. The art's really cool on it. The only thing that there's the whole FOMO thing that they did because if you didn't back this and it ends up being a good game and you wanted to get it, all your army is going to be cubes. Oh yeah. But if you, the only way you could get all the miniatures mm -hmm. was if you did it backed it on the Kickstarter yep. and all those cubes instead would be little plastic miniatures. Yep. So if I decide I'm going to get it, I'm going to have to buy a Kickstarter copy from somebody and all yep. that stuff. Um, it was just weird that they, because their, well, their, 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 their project was going to succeed. Yeah. But then they canceled it yep. because they wanted to su succeed more. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's, that's what I glimpsed from it. That was one of those games where any company that kind of cancels a successful Kickstarter with really no real reason is mm -hmm. always shady to me. Like I've, I've had, I've seen Kickstarters get canceled and they'll release an update and be like, okay, well clearly the overwhelming opinion is people don't like this. So we're going to rehash it and they'll mm -hmm. try and modify it to appease people who want to buy their game. Gray Fox didn't seem to do that with After the Earth, so I'm like, why the hell would you? Well, this is the only one they've ever done that because they did. <clears throat> I mean, Champions of Midgard, Reavers, all that stuff. Those are those are those weren't Kickstarter, the, were yeah, they? they were. Oh yeah, they were. You're right. Yeah. 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 Um, so this is the only one they did. So I don't know if they just it wasn't making what they expected, and they wanted to because they threw in a bunch more stuff mm -hmm. of the stretch goals. Yeah. 
included. I mean, don't get me wrong, it looked cool. I like yeah. the idea of building up like your wall mm -hmm. and or your your kind of empire. I yeah. thought that could have been pretty neat. Um, so pretty much, you're just you just protect. It's a protect your kin kingdom game. Mm -hmm. You know, you're building resources. You keep repairing as as you're. As you ward off defenses, you keep preparing your castle. You put yep. workers up on the wall to help protect stuff. It's, it's just kind of a. It was a unique deal, and I want to try it. Yeah. Um. I'll want to. Try, I'll definitely want to try it before I shell out. Try to and the go for the Kickstarter. Yeah. I, and here's I the thing: that backed it, so. is at the time that was going on, I had just gotten done playing their War of the Worlds game, which was a one v one. Um, I didn't really care for it. Uh, so I don't like that theme. It's, very well. Yeah, I, I bought it for the theme, and I was like, oh, 1v1, that could be pretty neat. Uh, but it just didn't work. But Gray Fox just kind of seems to be a lot of duds for me um, as of late. So I was like, I wasn't really. I think you'll like Reavers better than. I'm, you, I think you'll like Reavers better than Champions. Champions? Yeah. And I, I might. So, I mean, <clears throat> I'll have to look into, into Reavers or Midgard. But that seems to be where they're kind of putting all their efforts into the Midgard games. Mm -hmm. And then they're just kind of like, oh, yeah, these other... But you, you know, interns, go make that game. And then, <laughs> uh, so, who knows? Who knows? It, it might be amazing. You never know. We'll see. My number 16 is a game... Is a app-driven game, or not an app-driven game, but a game that has an app. Actually, I think it is app-driven. Called The Search for Planet X. Uh, here's the thing. is at the edge of our solar system, a dark planet may lurk. In 2015, astronomers estimate a large distant planet could explain the unique orbits of dwarf planets and other objects. So, let's see. Players take on the role of astronomers using observations and logical deductions to search for this hypothetical planet. Each game, the companion app randomly selects an arrangement of objects and locations for Planet X following predefined logic rules. So, it seemed to be kind of like a... I mean, it doesn't really explain how the game is played, except for the fact that there is an app that, that kind of randomizes the, right. the world. Um, it says, captures the thrill of discovery, the puzzle nature of astronomical investigation, and the com competition inherent in the scientific process. Can you be the first to find Planet X? I'm a sucker for app-driven app driven games like so whenever this one was kind of more of an exploration build in, in space I with, with an app I was kind of very intrigued by how they could do that if the what I'm hoping is that there's a lot of things to explore and that the app isn't just a glorified randomizer you know yes um, that would be that's the danger so it's just like <laughs> wow like wow okay just, maybe just randomize it so uh, I did back this on Kickstarter and I think if they do it right and like what you are exploring is is vast and like the app is like oh you're like kind of like a mansion so whenever you're mm -hmm. actually clicking on stuff and it's right. story driven through the app that could be really neat and the fact that it's competitive might also be intriguing because you might if you have different paths on trying to find the planet that could be cool. Did it I'll make have a lot of money, huh? Does it make a lot mm, of money? That's a good question. The only reason I ask is because app development costs a it's lot of money. It's pretty expensive. That is that, that is that, true. It kind of gives you an idea of how how uh, involved the app right. is going to be. Right. That's <laughs> that's a, a very good point. Um, I can look that up right now. But I mean, it dep Yeah, I mean, if it is going to be as defined as I'm wanting it to be. Then yeah, it'll be it'll be pretty expensive. Uh, let's see, search for Planet X. They had a goal of thirteen thousand, and they made forty eight. It's not bad. So they they did a pretty good job, um, in terms of what, like uh, like overachieving. But yeah, like, and Rado says, "Wow, this is so much fun! I am so blown away." Um, achieves everything it sets out to do beautifully and creates a really fun experience. So. I think I think it could be pretty pretty interesting. Like, uh, but the now the board itself does not look that like tantalizing, mm -hmm. so that makes me think that the app will be more the, involved. What the money is, yeah, yeah, and that's good. I mean, it's so yeah. So I mean, we can only find out. Yep. Uh, so that's my number sixteen. All right, my number fifteen is another IP one that's going to be coming to Kickstarter soon. I double checked. <laughs> um. <laughs> and it's the Army of Darkness, the board game. Come on. <laughs> I love the Army of Darkness. Have you seen it? I have seen the cover. <laughs> but you've never watched it? I've Army never actually Darkness. watched oh, the movie. God. And no, it's the it's the eighties one where he has the shotgun, right? 
like yeah, he has the, he has the, he has the yeah. chainsaw and the shotgun yeah, arm. Campbell yeah, and the, yeah. Isn't that like the sequel to Evil Dead or something? Isn't that it's like the third one in the series? Third There's one. Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two, and then Army of Darkness. This okay. was the more comedy version. Yes, yeah, I do know um, that. And this actually because it's a double barrel watch, shotgun. Then if right. you watch the show, uh, Ash versus Evil Dead, that was on Stars. I have all of that on mm. Blu-ray at home. Um, that's great, great continuation because he's like an old man and he's oh, okay. a guy and everything, and it <clears throat> continues on from this where this left off. Gotcha. It's mostly a chainsaw is what is attached to his hand. To oh, his I deal. see. Yeah, he, he holds the shotgun. There. Oh, okay, that's right. That's right. Here's your movie cover. Yes. Okay. But, yeah, and he anyway. never, he never reloads the shotgun even though right. it's a double barrel. Right, right. <laughs> but that was the funny. That was right. Th- right. This was a parody of the other two. Like the first two were tried to be s- Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two were made serious, Mm -hmm. at least the first one for sure. Yeah. Um, But it got such a cult following because it was done so poorly Mm -hmm. that it was funny. Yeah. That then they decided, hell, we're just going to lean all into the fun side. Yeah. I I have seen Evil Dead. I've actually seen that one and the remake, and I hated them both. (laughs) Yeah. I didn't care for the Evil Deads, but the Army of Darkness was just Yeah, I I know a lot of people like like that one. So anyway, what it's going to be, is it's uh it's gonna be a cooperative game. Okay. For one to four players. It can be played sixty nine minutes. It's it's an action assignment area control game. Alright. You play as Ash and his allies, work together to fight off swarms of deadites. So it's gonna be think think Fireteam Zero is what I'm picturing. Like oh, before okay. and then you're gonna have swarms coming yeah. in and you're, gotcha. you're protecting. You can upgrade defenses with modern technology out of the trunk of Ash's car. <clears throat> You know, it's just, dude. You it, know that's gonna be bad. So fun. You know it's gonna be bad. <laughs> but here's the deal: How can a company named Dynamite Games <laughs> make a make bad. a poor game when they've made games like Red Sonia, the board game, <laughs> and and uh, what else did they make? Red Sonia and Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm gonna reserve judgment. The miniatures look pretty cool. I mean, this this is that's kind of the the Ash miniature, you know. Sure. You know. Um, they've got the license for it. It's a I could play it solo. It may suck <laughs> if if they charge more than eighty dollars. Man, I can't wait I'm for the twenty twenty disappointment or worse list. <laughs> but you have here's the deal. So each turn, players have a limited time to simultaneously play, move, attack, action. Oh, uh, so, so it's so real it's time. A, so you have to do your stuff within a certain amount of time too. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm a yeah. sucker for Army of Darkness. I stuff. guess I, I have so much it's, Army of Darkness stuff in my house. They got you. They that, got you, uh, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot when it hits Kickstarter. So anyway, that's it. All right. Good deal. <laughs> I mean, not really, but. <laughs> All right, my number 15 (coughs) might be on your list. I can't remember if you backed it or not. Um, This is a game by Lucky Duck Games. They're kind of making a name for themselves. Uh, Lately, my number 15. And this is called Kingdom Kingdom Rush, Rift in Time. This is a... I don't think it's real time, um, but it is definitely a... uh, It's a tower defense. Um, So... uh, says you play through a unique campaign to foil the Time Mage's plan for total domination of the space-time continuum. Um, each new scenario in the campaign is more challenging than the one before it, adds more foes, game-changing events, and epic bosses to battle. But it's a... Yeah, I mean, it's it's tower defense. You com- command heroes and build towers so your heroes can go out, and like how you attack and mm-hmm. use your equipment is based off of their positioning. And it's kind of like a... Not really like a Tetrisy thing, but like essentially where they attack is like, oh, it could be up and to the left to one. So how you want to build them is going to be based off of the way that they're going to be coming in. You can lay out traps and send out heroes, um, but you can get in each other's way. It's obviously a cooperative game. Um, biggest reasons why I jumped on it is I actually don't have any tower defense games. Yeah. Like I like tower defense. One of them that I'm still waiting on. Oh, might have actually should have been on this uh it should have been on this list. I completely forgot about it. Project Elite, uh, the one that yeah. Simon ended up making. That's kind of real time tower defense, more or less. But yeah, I don't have like because I used to when I was younger play those old school computer games mm-hmm. where it was just like one person and then you had like the shitty ass little beam and then by the end of it it's just like nonstop. And yeah. That was that was always fun. Now I don't 
obviously foresee it being anything near that. But Lucky Duck Games, they've done Vikings Gone Wild and Chronicles of Crime. Um, and I feel like they've, I'm sure they've done other things that... They had that one Kickstarter. Tickles my fancy. The Time of Legends. Oh, yeah. So they actually have done quite a few. Uh, what the... F <laughs> Linked items above and below for some reason. Oh, yeah. I forgot they also did Fruit Ninja. But, yeah, Chronicles of Crime and uh, Fruit Ninja. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad app. Um, but, wow, it already has an 8, so it must be good. Man, all the people you know that have clearly played in the year 2020. Um... But yeah, it's it's Lucky Duck, and I'm kind of <coughs> kind of a fan of the games that I have played for them, and it might just it might just fulfill that that tower defense thing that I'm looking for. So that's my number fifteen. <clears throat> my, my number fourteen is another IP. <laughs> no, my number fourteen is a Lucky Duck game. Oh, <laughs> it's not the Lucky Duck game you were talking about. It's Time of Legends Destinies. Destinies. Um, I didn't but go in with any of the Joan of Arc stuff because. I don't think that's the same. <clears throat> they can they 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 will overlap a little bit. Really? Um, there's a scenario like the the phone stuff, the the app huh. that's going to enter it. It's vaguely, it's, I, okay, it's not see, like they're totally connected. It's just who did t the Joan of Arc? It wasn't. I didn't think it was Lucky, Lucky Duck, Duck, but I oh. think they're using because Lucky Duck's app integration. Okay, is going to. Gotcha. I, th I think they're teaming a little bit. Okay. Because that was Time of Legends, Joan of Arc. This right. is Time of Legends, Destinies. Right. Now what it says about this deal, it says um, Time of Legends, Destinies is a competitive story-driven game, mm -hmm. right, of adventure and exploration mixing an app and a board game. And it says it's the first in a series of games using a brand new system called Destinies. This game is set in the dark medieval fantasy universe of Time of Legends, Joan of Arc. That's right. Um, That's right. So it's going to be like an RPG-like board game experience, fully mm -hmm. story driven. The app's gonna yep. deal. I went. <clears throat> I'm. I went in with it for a dollar on this just to get access to the pledge manager. I haven't done the pledge manager yet. Yep. I backed up. I went um, all in on that one. So I will. I thought the Time of Legends was just a coincidental like just no, it's, tag. It's in the same. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I so it's going to use the same scan and play. You know. Yep. Stuff. That's and, right. And your decisions are radically <clears throat> different because of the yes. competitive nature. I think that's what makes it. Super unique. So it says this game is a result of a close cooperation between Lucky Duck Games and uh, Mythic Games. That's it, Mythic Games. So it's just, it looks awesome. I mean, you know, I like Lucky Duck Games because of Chronicles. That's the mm -hmm. only one I've played of theirs. Um, the app is so seamless with that. Yep. <clears throat> I've, I've liked the world and stuff of Joan of Arc. I just those the big battle games like that. I just didn't I want to wanted get into. to. I wanted to get Joan of Arc so bad for their second Kickstarter, yeah. but it was like seven hundred dollars, yeah, and I was like, and I don't. Their miniatures aren't like they're those reduced size miniatures. Mm -hmm. Even they're so they're even smaller than normal. So when it says you're getting two hundred fifty miniatures, they're like, well, I'm like, well, you're really one hundred twenty-five. Cut them in half. And yeah. Then, I mean, um, but it had a lot of cool stuff to it. I mean, it's, yeah, because it was worth more... that money, even if you were to spend. That amount of money you're getting your money's yeah. worth with all the crap you get because I've seen Chad's the dragon. It's stuff. yeah, and I mean because it's it's a mix of like real battles and then also right. the fantasy stuff. So so the reason I'm all jumping in on this is because I'm gonna this is gonna I'm gonna get the feeling of the world of that without spending a lot of money and I get the app integration of this. So it's mm -hmm. I'm gonna kind of have an experience right. of the same game right. Um, and Lucky Ducks turned into one of those deals that, well, like, I didn't end up backing Kingdom Rush. Oh, okay. I was a backer. Oh, okay. I, I think I put a dollar in and then yeah. I ended up. Um, but Lucky Duck does get, get, does get stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just keep keep moving. And yeah. they can use this. With them, with them being the proprietors of this Destiny system, they're mm -hmm. going to be able to... To look, branch off into off anything. Yep. Anything. So they could really... Yeah. So you know, start growing pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Time of Legends Destinies. Excellent. Good deal. My number fourteen. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have it right, right here. Is I'm sure should be on your list because I, I know you backed it, um, and you have played uh, another game by this by these brothers, um, <laughs> the Sadler brothers. Uh, yeah. This game is Alter Quest. <laughs> so. Alter Quest is kind of... Oh, well, never mind. I, I, no, that was no. one of the kicks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, that game actually sucks. I played it the other day. So, 
this one seemed to be kind of like your own quest, you know, fantasy adventure, but also utilized the map in, in like the terrain and things like that. Like I remember one of the things was one of your heroes could be like a rogue or, or a goblin or a hobbit of some sort. And you could like, uh, I remember watching a quick playthrough was like, you can use like a grappling hook to grab onto a bookshelf to move around. And, uh, so neat things like that, because you got to make dungeon crawls unique at this point. Mm -hmm. You can't just run in and do nothing because that's boring. But here it says, chooses to play as a hero with their own cards and equipment. Players choose a quest deck to undertake, a threat deck to serve as the main enemy forces, and a sinister villain deck. Each of these decks are fixed and require no assembly, but can be mixed and matched to create a wide variety of combinations. So that sounds really cool with the, the replayability. While heroes attempt to complete their quest before drawing the attention of the almighty villain, the unstable magic of the altars constantly affect the game. Altar dice are tied to the mystical powers known as runes, uh, with an H, which can enhance cards in different ways. So each time an altar die is used, that die is rolled to create an ever-changing mix of runes to draw upon. Like, I know Street Masters, uh, a lot of people were fans of Brook City, mm -hmm. you uh, you told me was really good. Mm -hmm. um, they actually went on they Kickstarter did, for another the, one, uh, Heroes they, in Need. Yeah, and they did um, the uh, uh, Walking Dead. Oh, the uh, good one? The good like, one. The good, yeah, yeah. Exactly. so yeah, they did another one called Heroes in Need, and apparently a lot of people were pissed because it was like, this sounds like your other games, like, mix it up, but... Ultra Quest, I remember watching the run through four and I was like, I'm a huge sucker for fantasy games anyway. Uh, so having a unique hero with a unique deck and things that you can use to move around the board with what they're saying as altar dice or the altars that can affect the game board and the combinations of heroes and, and or not heroes, the combinations of like the villains and and monsters would create a, a different different dynamic. It just sounds like it could be could be a, a lot of fun. Doesn't seem campaign driven either, which will be nice. <laughs> so because campaign games are, it's like you always I always feel obligated to get them. Well, played. if you look at the board, you get a really strong deal of Hero Quest. Yeah, the old, yeah. The old early nineties. Right, game. That right. Was my first board game. Yeah, I never I've never um, played Hero Quest, but I've seen it played, yeah. and yeah, it did give me that similar vibe yeah. where it's like, what made the game. What made Hero Quest great was you had kind of like that DM kind of scenario. Yeah, it was all versus one, but yeah. it, was, it was all. But what what made what made it visually stand out was when you were setting up the map. It, each room had three D furniture, mm -hmm. and I think that's why like the rooms were geometric shaped. Yep. Just like in Alter Quest, and then when and there's all this three D furniture, bookcases, and needed. Yeah. But it's just yeah. Awesome I mean, it it, it there, flushes you know? out the board, <laughs> and I think that's what. <clears throat> can make dungeon like uh, it, dungeon crawls like mm -hmm. pop. So, yeah, I'm excited to see how that one plays out. So that is my fourteen Alter Quest. All right, my number thirteen. I it, it will be on your list. It is on your list for <laughs> a fact. Um, and it's on my list not because I backed it, it's because well, I didn't have the money at the time to back it. I want to you play it. I want to play it very badly. Why don't you go into debt for board games, Brad? Come on. Because I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have two kids getting ready to go to college. Oh, that's true. Um, that's true. I have zero kids, and I am not married. But um, it is <laughs> uh, Etherfields, Etherfields from Awakened Realms. You don't know me. <laughs> it's not on my list. Um, the reason this one stands out to me is because it sounds unique with the whole dreamscape. Um, world, you know, and stuff like that, as opposed to like their other games were more, you know, the Arthurian legend and the, and uh, then you had the This War's Mind mm -hmm. stuff like that. This one delves into like dreams, yeah, and stuff, and and so you can get all kinds of fucked up in dreams. That's and, true. And so they're minis. Well, it seems kind of too. I mean, you look at some of those minis that are with this, right? Like, and they have like nuts. some mask mechanic, yeah. which would which I like. Not a hundred percent on how that works, but yeah, like I don't, I don't know a whole lot about it. I just know that it was one I was like, man, I'd back this if I. The only way to do Awaken Realms Kickstarters is all in. All and in. If you don't yeah. have them. I mean, if you can't go all in, just, just cry well. in the corner. And, <laughs> yeah, you know. I, I went all in for other uh, other <clears throat> fields. Um, uh, for the same reason, it seems to be kind of like that dream. Basically, take Seventh Continent but put it in dreams and be all weird. <laughs> Weird about it. Yeah, so. so everything you do will change the strange rhythm. Mm -hmm. Etherworld's dream world follows. Yeah, and it's gameplay by 
dude that made Nirishima Hex and The Edge. I mean, um, I don't know where my Edge stuff is. <laughs> yeah. But probably neither does anyone so else. So it has deck building, which is another mm -hmm. thing I like. You know, it's... Yeah, I know it, you'll talk about it more later because you probably know more about it. But but I just I just like the the idea of it, the look mm -hmm. of it, um, and uh, I look forward to playing somebody's at some point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <clears throat> my number thirteen is a game that I have actually been keeping up with probably for like the past at least two years. It's a game by Level Ninety Nine called Seventh Cross. Now, Seventh Cross, I believe is like, I, I want to say it's like an anime or hentai, no kidding. It's just some porn game. Um, but no, it says the year is 1920 beneath the surface of society. An ancient and enigmatic church suppresses knowledge of the supernatural to protect the greater good of humanity and ret retain its grip on the world. So you take on the role of a church hunter, sworn defender of the world against the forces of darkness, Delve into the heart of evil as you explore your way through ever-changing castles filled with unique narratives. So, <clears throat> this, you said level ninety-nine. Yeah. So is this the whole? Is has that art still the same as all the other ones? Yeah, I don't know if it's the same <laughs> world as like their so Indines world. I don't okay. think. I think it's a completely separate okay. game. Okay. But like, I didn't know if it, um, it it does have the same right. art, like the anime animated right. uh, art. But like. Uh, like, I just remember this, okay, what's well, going to be on Kickstarter this year, but then it never went, and then now it's saying it's going to be in Kickstarter in 2020. Um, but here's here's what got me. Seventh Cross is a roguelike, don't know what that means, exploration game that combines elements of paragraph adventure games like Tales of Arabian Nights and exploration elements like Betrayal at the House on the Hill to form a Castlevania, Bloodborne, Helsing sort of narrative well, adventure. Go. Say Bloodborne. Like, and I was just like, ew! <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more! <laughs> so, I mean, just the fact, because, I mean, I know a lot of people don't like Tales of Arabian Nights, but I've always had a blast just having those whimsical, fun adventures. Mm -hmm. So if they can have that kind of book-driven um, exp exploration <laughs> kind of scenarios that are decision-based and has that Castlevania, Bloodborne feel, like, sign me up. Like, right. that's that's all you need to tell me. Like, the Castlevania Bloodborne Helsing thing is just sounds fucking badass. So, I'm very intrigued. I like level 99 games. I haven't had a single one of their games flop for me. So, uh, so yeah. Like, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I hope it does go on Kickstarter next year and gets delivered next year. All right. My number 12. Yep. It's our first crossover. Ooh! Which is it? Titans. Titans, okay. Yep. Um, Titans, I like those, I like area control style games. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the, I wouldn't probably have given this one much of a <clears throat> second look if I hadn't played Valhalla yep. and knew the designer, like, through that game. Uh, cause Valhalla is a wonderful dice card game. Mm -hmm. Um, they use the same artist. The art, oh, okay. is, the art from Valhalla is the it, same. It's, that, it's, uh, it almost like comes off of the box. Gotcha. Like we were talking about, art, you know, box art mm -hmm. and stuff. Like that company. Yeah. That art is just it's re super hyper realistic art. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> um, and uh, so I don't have Blood Rage anymore. Yep. You know, so like this could be my <laughs> control. You're like, like they kind of come in. Um, because you have the four factions, you know, and then, like you said, you have your regular soldiers, and you have your big, mm. uh, your big titans you bring in, <clears throat> and it kind of has an interesting art style too, because yeah, because they it almost looks like there's like can like cannons and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like I don't know how to. It's kind of fan. It's fantasy, obviously, but then you look up close, and there's like you know, swords and shields and on the on the titans mm -hmm. so you expect, a lot of people you know i'd expect titans to be like monster type you know like the fire giants and all right. that crap but these are like i think there's like cannons and stuff if you look at the cover like on the ground there's yeah cannons it seemed it's almost like a revolutionary war like yeah it's it's kind of a weird mix of stuff you know right. and <clears throat> and um I don't know. They've been talking it up a lot because I know mean, you've been getting emails. I mean, that's how you knew about it. Mm -hmm. If you backed Valhalla, I mean, you, 
you were kind of constantly getting hit with emails from them and stuff. Yep. And, and, uh, the one thing you're going to guarantee with a, a game made by, I can't think of his name now. It is Lucas. Lucas. That's what it is. Lucas Wojniak. Yeah. But he really does like, like Valhalla he released in Poland before he did the American release Kickstarter. Oh, okay. So it was already play tested out, had already gotten all the bugs out of it before they did it here. I don't think that's the case with this yet. Yeah. But I think this may only be their second Kickstarter, but I trust that Right, that they're they know what put they're the doing. Work in and mm. know what they're doing because the his Valhalla ended up coming in super good quality and stuff. So right. anyway, Titans, awesome, awesome. My number twelve is our second crossover, Time of Legends Destinies. Uh, so yeah, exactly what you were saying. Um, I didn't know if they were like I mentioned tied into the Time of Legends Joan of Arc. Um, that might be one of those things that I might try to just slowly piece together, like right. get the core box and then try and find everything else, or maybe talk to our friend Chad and be like, "Hey, you uh, you playing that at all?" I don't know if he'll sell. He's that's one he hasn't wavered on. Really? Yeah. Because normally he he usually never he buys them and then I mean it depends on when you catch him. If you catch him before Gen Con, yeah. Oh, he might. Yeah. That's true. He might be trying yeah. to make some money. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, uh, and I really should just go for the core game anyway, and just to see if I would even like it. But uh, the Time of Legends Destinies seemed really, really cool, set in that same world, Joan of mm -hmm. Arc, that I'm not too familiar with, but I, I, I like. Um, I know the real Joan of Arc world, because I studied it, but not the mythical. What was your major? Uh, well, I was a history major. Okay, that's what I thought. A ancient Civilizations and History was my major back when I first like was about college, twenty years ago. Years. Yeah, <laughs> oh god! <laughs> when I graduated in two thousand three. Oh wow! Yeah, that degree and yeah, so it's been pretty <laughs> close to twenty years ago. And then and then I went back and graduated in two thousand six with with my teaching degree. Oh, gotcha. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, I've only seen like the movie, and I know a little bit about Joan of Arc, but not not. Like probably not as much as you, but yeah. So the the app driven adventure with like the the you know story driven scenarios mm -hmm. and and growing your character and the fact that it is competitive is really interesting. I'm I'm hoping that they can do enough to where it's like if we're if we're doing different things that we're gonna have different experiences versus right. just running into the same thing. Right. Um. But they've done a fantastic job with Chronicles of Crime. I think I, I have faith that they can make this a really cool app driven world. And like you mentioned, if they have if it's a if it's if the destinies is the tag, like really then more than Time of Legends is, then they can be like, Oh, now it's they can Blood branch Rage out. Destinies. <laughs> Bloodborne <laughs> Destinies. Ooh yeah. Army of Darkness Destinies. <laughs> <laughs> this turns into a shithole like a <laughs> Um But yeah, I'm I'm very excited. Like I mentioned with Kingdom Rush, funny enough, two Lucky Duck games are on my anticipated list, but they've just they're they're slowly coming up and, and making a name for themselves. So I'm I'm excited. So yeah, it's my number twelve. All right, my number eleven was a game I I wanted very very badly to get a demo of at Origins last year, and I never did get a mm -hmm. chance to. Oh, question um, yes. when you because you mentioned demo, have yes. you played any of your games on your list? Um, hold on a second. I have played two of mine. Well, Night of the Living Dead, I played Zombie Side. Oh. <laughs> no. uh, let's see. Because I was I was gonna ask and see if uh, I've played. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I played one. One. Okay. And then I the the digital implementation of another. Okay. Gotcha. So, All right. I was just curious. Yeah. Um, so anyway, my eleven is a game I really wanted to demo. I didn't get a chance to. It's called Dwellings of Eldervale. Um, it's from Breaking oh, Games. Yeah. Um, it's so it was super colorful. Super, mm -hmm. I mean, I really kicked myself. I just did couldn't get there when it wasn't being. They didn't have Demoed. a huge booth, mm. and I couldn't. Really, they have they have a pretty big booth at Gen Con. Yeah, so they probably save it up for. Oh, okay. I'm not, I'm not saying it was like a little hole, <laughs> but I mean. They, only, One they guy. had like two tables going, I think, and, oh, yeah. and I only yeah. had my breaks when I was not demoing mm -hmm. myself. So, yeah. so anyway, um, it's an it they they call it an epic worker placement game, um, and you, you're there's all these uh, factions. They have you know they have several factions. Mm -hmm. It's not just the the normal 
deal. Um, you're, it's a blend of worker placement, area control, engine building, and unique worker pl units. So I'm assuming, by the way, that means unique worker units that they're going to do different things. Yeah. Go in different places. I mean, in Breaking Games, it's the same one that did Rise of Tribes. It is. Yep. So yeah, I knew they, I'd seen. I hadn't. And they to did. See they, they did a pretty, um, pretty decent like worker placement like uh, job with that one. So mm -hmm. Dwellings of Elder Veil vale, uh, was one I was I was intrigued by. Yeah. It says players take turns placing a worker in Elder Veil vale or regrouping and activating their tableau of adventure cards. Okay. Uh, action spaces include realm keys to power, a summoning portal, ancient mill, lost fortress, deep dungeons, crumbling mage tower. Uh, so you're going to be having air, fire, water, light, dark, order, and chaos magic cards. Yep. Um, grant spells quit. It's just that it says in the end that the players with the most elemental dominance among the multiple paths to victory will mm -hmm. reign over Eldervale. It sounds generic in a way, a little bit, the theme. Mm-hmm. The board will not look, it looks anything but generic, like when you sure. look at it and how they, like all the stuff that's on the board, it, yep. it, it looks like a pretty, uh, they give it their, a... Their cover looked A 3.38 really... weight, which I mean, I know that's not It's not even yet, out yet, so. yeah. But um, it looks busy. Yeah. But it looks it's very bright, vibrant. Yeah, it looks really. very ex exp expansive. Yeah, so um, I think it had already went through Kickstarter. It has. So, I have the pledge manager up, um, yeah. but I'm finding it a hard. I'm giving my. Uh, I'm having a hard time pulling the trigger on how much it costs because I don't know a whole lot about it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, I mean it's. Like I said, I wanted to give it a play, and then maybe I need to watch a playthrough. Yeah. Just to see, but yep, Dwellings of Eldervale. All right. Be a good one, I think. All right. The reason why I asked if you had played uh, any games, because uh, my number eleven, I have played. I played it at Gen Con two years ago. Um, so it's actually been out on Kickstarter. I think they just, for some reason, they just keep. I don't know why it's not out yet. They're taking, they're taking their time. But Solomon Kane yeah. is my number eleven. Um, that was on my <clears throat> anticipated last last year. Was I think I think it was on mine too because I, I, I expected it to be I out this year. About it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not that because I really don't. It got replaced for me. I yeah. Think. So uh, Solomon Kane one is a is a cool world and and a cool character and. The game is really neat. So you don't play as Solomon Kane. You play as his. It's not virtues, but like uh, just. Uh, well, it might actually say it here what, uh, what the actual terminology is. Um, players take part of the invisible powers of good and light who aid Solomon Kane in his quest to overcome the forces of darkness. Yeah, cardinal virtues. That's what it was. Courage, prudence, temperance, and justice. Each was each with special powers that reflect their unique role. So it's really interesting because it's kind of a dice... It's not dice worker placement, but it's like dice action placement. <laughs> um, in that to get him to do certain things because he's battling within himself to, to perform actions and you can control him to do certain things by gathering certain dice and then placing them on cards and your unique abilities to get him to do stuff. Thematically... The friend that went with me two years ago and played it, he thought it was actually weird because to get him to move like one space, you have to do a lot of work with the virtues and dice drafting. And he's like, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And he's not wrong, but because you do have to do quite a bit to make him do something. But it's because he's battling, he's wanting to do something else. So he might just want to beeline and kill some, like kill this kid who might be, like, who potentially might be uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, possessed. But you might be like, because the, the game and scenarios are story driven. Right. So the choices you make and stuff will affect the rest of that story and go and so on and so forth. So we might want him to do something else. So you, it's like, no, we don't want him to attack. So we have to uh, place all these dice and play these cards to get him to talk to him instead. And it turns out he might be possessed and then Solomon King gets attacked. And so there's there's that type of element to it. Um. Then there's like also demons, well not really demons, but like spirits or ghosts that are going to try and attack him and you as his virtues protect him. And, right. Um, it's a really, really cool game. Mythic Games, same as, you know, T Time of Legends, Joan of Arc, so maybe that's where all their efforts go. And then maybe. it's just taking, taking more time away from Solomon Cain. But they also, Mythic Games uh, is doing something else, I thought, that, that their name was on. 
It is. Oh, they also did Mythic Battles Pantheon, mm -hmm. which is is a massive, massive game. But, but yeah, like let's see. It says narrative adventure board game, uh, highly innovative cooperative game of storytelling, resource management, and tactical miniatures play. Uh, yeah, I've never actually read anything about Solomon Kane, but uh, it could be one of those things that I'd be very intrigued. So. Each of Howard's tales is told as one or more acts, with each act comprising a full game session. Shorter stories like Rattle of Bones can be completed in a single session, whilst longer tales will take multiple sessions to play through. And there's a lot that came with the Kickstarter that I fully jumped in, and this is a completely long description, because it tells, who is Solomon Cain? I don't give a fuck about that. But, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping three years, the game should be coming out <laughs> relatively soon. Right. Uh... And, oh, I think I actually know their other game. Reichbusters is yeah. another mythic game. So they might have just bitten off a little bit more than they can chew. <clears throat> I guess we'll find out. But I'm I'm pretty excited for this one out of, out of all the other games that, that they're doing. So that's my number 11. All right. So hitting my top 10. It's a game I just found out about a couple hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> it, is my, it is Unsettled. Oh. Um, <laughs> It is uh, one of my top ten games of all time. All at number ten yep. is Vindication. Um, is brought to my attention that Unsettled is, is, and this is only their this is their second game, and it's unique. Yeah. It's um, I was doing some looking at it and stuff, and it's totally cooperative. Okay, you need at least two people, right? There's no enemies, no combat, no nothing in the game. Pretty much okay. what it does is there's the box is going to contain individual planet boxes. And within each box is its own game. Okay. Um, whereas there's going to be something you need to do in this in there, whether it's fix the water purifier or whatever, and pe people are going to start getting sick. Okay. So you're trying to get that stuff done in an appropriate amount of time or whatever before whatever you know some of me that stupid video i was watching on kickstarter like one guy got knocked unconscious mm -hmm. and one person got uh delirious okay and then there was up to this other guy to do this hail mary maneuver to try to fix the machine before he, mm -hmm. you know and stuff and it's so there's different scenarios and it'll be like you can replay them over and over there's, yeah it's going to be different stuff that needs fixed oh i see but each planet contains all the cards and everything that it needs for each deal. And there's stretch goals that are unlocking other planets and sure, everything yeah. too. But they, they'll have, um, uh, what's the stupid vacuform plastic company that makes the game trays and stuff? Oh, or, you know what I'm talking about. Is it about. called Game Trays? Yeah, Game Trays. <laughs> game Trays. Uh, but anyway, they, they, like so they're going to they're gonna have each of those in there. The art's mm. really clean. Um, but it looks, it looks interesting where it's just a pure cooperative. Yep, type deal, you know, and you're just working through and and uh, yeah, I uh, I pull I, together to get the resources necessary to survive the long journey home, and you're just surviving. I um didn't know anything about that game, so thank you. That does sound really cool. I backed it based off of the off of, the, off of the rumors of Vindication because I've not played Vindication myself. Yeah, so. um, so I'll, I'll look at it more. You know, it looks really sweet. The art really... I mean, it's not going to be the same kind of game as Vindication, obviously. This is a pure co-op. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks like it might be interesting. Awesome. You know? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep, unsettled. That probably would have made my list had I played Vindication, but... Right. Um, all right. My number 10 is another game that I have actually played. I demoed it also at Gen Con, but this past year, um, in, or in, in 2019. Um, and that is 1001 Odysseys. So this is kind of a similar situation to uh, the seventh seventh cross, where it's a storybook uh, adventure game. So let me pull pull it up real quick. There it is. Uh, what does it say here? Uh, the first human FTL ship, the Odyssey, sets out to explore a new sector of the galaxy after finding an operational alien Stargate. Players take on the roles of the Odyssey's bridge crew as they find planets, meet strange new aliens, and eventually try to find the way back home. So here's what's really cool. One, it's it's choice-based. Like, the whole scenario is all choice-driven. Um, and the demo that we were playing was, it's like... Uh, each person like had their own role so like one person is like the captain and they kind right. of they they're in charge of like 
uh, deciding where we can go, and then one person's, I don't remember the roles, but, um, because I was playing with two weirdos, (laughs) Uh, and then the guy running it, and, like, one of the, at least the demo, was, like, some, some, uh, a pet shop was broken into, and then a, a lot of animals were, uh, were released, and there was, like, oh, we were tasked to go, get to go find them, and, Depending on where we want, went to, that would uh, that would like open up a new section, and then like depending on the choice we made over there and who we talked to, that would give us another section to go up. And it was it was really innovative. And the other thing about this game is the artwork for it is kind of like your watercolor art. Here, let's see if I can. Um, yeah, there's a picture. Like that's kind of the. That's cool. Like the, it's like, yeah, your watercolor, very, very bright art. Um, And then how they decide is like where you go. So cards can be played. (coughs) Cards can be played that they go on like this map, which then activates certain locations. So that's kind of Mm -hmm. how you decide what you're going to read in the script. So it's like based off this action. So talk to the government. We get a mission one card and then we're in a certain location. So it says B1, G4 at Capital Bulbs, and then that gives us your your story. So everything that you do is going to be cycling these certain cards, lock out certain areas, which will then, you know, right. make you have your own unique story. Uh, the thing that was pretty cool is at the end of this, they had a little promo thing. It was just a card, but we all, we ended up finding and returning a jellyfish, and they have their own unique names and stuff like that. But he gave us all a card, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So you can get items and things that will carry on mm-hmm. the fruit through your story. So I'm a sucker for story-driven games, like things that will immerse me into a world. And uh, even during that demo, that got me really excited for this game to come out. So it's my number 10. All right. My number 9 I talked about last year. still not out. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it this time because it's not much different than... <laughs> It's original base game, and that's Starcadia Quest. Oh, God. <clears throat> I want to play Starcadia Quest because <laughs> I want to try it in space, and I want to try the new mechanic where you um, only control the two mm-hmm. uh, people instead of the three. Yep. Right? I still haven't gotten that opportunity. Uh, there hasn't been much talk about it either. It's it's All I found yeah. when I searched was a <laughs> place to, where you could a link to go get refunds. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that isn't... Uh, so that does not know. bode I, well. Well, I, I, I just... I don't know what... <laughs> like, you wouldn't think you would keep pounding Kickstarters out, 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 out until you've started catching up because that one's been out, done for mm-hmm. quite a while. I think the pro, I think the Kickstarter actually ended for that one in late 17. I feel like... Uh, or maybe even early uh, 18. Yeah, I think it was 18. But I mean, still, it's... 2020 now and it's i mean mm-hmm. it's pretty much arcadia quest you know yep. <laughs> so i don't i don't know what the what the hang-up is but but anyway i still want to try it when it comes out starcadia quest right bravo so this one's interesting my number nine is a game by pandasaurus games called godspeed yeah and the theme around it is that you are sent on a mission to the moon Mm-hmm. And you think you're gonna be the first one there, but you end up finding out that there's like this whole civilization <laughs> that was actually already colonized and living there. Um, yeah, I if you at this one. if you go on Board Game Geek to find anything out about the fucking game, all it says is the space race was a lie. Find out why in Godspeed. Thank you, Pandasaurus, for giving people. A... Well, I'm wondering, is it gonna be a story? I don't think so because I, I went to their Kickstarter because I'm like, fine, I gotta get information somewhere, and. Their Kickstarter does actually have it on here. Godspeed is a unique worker placement game with a few wrinkles that make it really something special. Each team member, worker, for a given nation has two unique qualities, a specialty and an influence value. These are both important and will come into play throughout the course of the game. The most important bit of gameplay, once you have assigned a team member to a task, they cannot be used for anything else until the next round. So, I mean, has a unique color scheme, has a unique theme, Solid, unique worker placement um, that uh, that's just kind of what enveloped me. And because it's worker placement, 
I'm going off Pandasaurus's mm-hmm. Dinosaur Island, yeah. not off of their last Kickstarter, which was <clears throat> Dead Man's Cabal. Yeah. That totally flopped. I don't. I feel like they kind of really focused more on this one than they said they've been working on it for a couple of years now. So um, I am very intrigued. I don't like the fact that they just don't have anything about the the game, but it breaks down into like four phases. You have the High Council. Um, the nations will convene to decide how they will respond to an event. Um, <clears throat> and that's kind of a bidding mechanism where everyone can kind of participate to, if, if it's successful, everyone gets its resource. If it fails, it affects everyone. Then there's the supply depot. Uh, nations bid on cargo shipments that have come to Earth that contain valuable supplies. Then you do your actions with your unique worker placements. So some workers are really good for certain actions right. while others. So I like that a lot. Um, and then end game scoring. So there's four prestige tracks. So whoever uh, completes missions and objectives will go up on these tracks, and whoever has the most victory points uh, <coughs> wins. So what makes Godspeed special? Might as well tell everyone because it's not on Board Game Geek. Um, is every single action you take affects other players? End game scoring is based upon how you have progressed versus the other players. You race for milestone points and move up the prestige track. There is no dominant strategy in the game because everything is a give and take between you and other nations. I think that's really cool because yeah. uh, any worker placement game, actually any game, uh, two of which that come to mind is Coloma and uh, Crusaders that will be done, is if there's one surefire way to win, it's like, why would I want to come back and play this if I have no challenge for myself to to try different strategies based off of just how I'm feeling that day. Um, like, I don't want to play a game that it's like, oh, okay, who, who can do the same strategy better than the other players? So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very intrigued by that give-take mechanic. So that's my number nine, Godspeed. Please be better than Dead Man's Cabal. <laughs> my number eight is going to be on your list somewhere too, most likely. Okay. And it is Onk. Hey, let's talk about this at the same Gods time. Gods of Egypt. We're both at six <laughs> yeah, uh, or seven. Yeah. What number are we doing eight. right now? Eight. Eight. Yeah, eight. <laughs> All right, so Onk. <laughs> yeah, Onk. Um, so what I've gathered from this and what has stood out to me is that um, there, the battles are non-random. That is the thing that stands out when you're reading this. The battles are non-random. Okay. You compete and win solely on your godly wits alone. Ooh. So there's no randomness in battle. Hmm. So I'm... Streamlined and non-random. So that that intrigues me because I'm sitting here like, okay. So what does that mean by... Like chess? Oh. Because it's not random. Yeah. You're 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 solely working on a position. So is chess going to be the... Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, You're right. I, I, I haven't seen it, heard anything about him saying what the predecessor of yeah, this is going to be. Yeah, what did you say? Rising Sun was was, was diplomacy. Yeah, and, and Blood risk Rage was, was risk. Yeah. Okay. So I'm wondering, like, okay, so this is to- non-random. I mean, like, like if you're not randomizing the cards you have are in your, in your hand, you're not rolling dice for randomness, then how else can you do it? It's got to be movement based. Like every like, piece has its own. Right. Hmm. That's why I'm, I mean I, that's that's what I've got in my head as a chess thinking. I haven't seen anything else about this game. Yeah, yeah. As far as it's, it's not on Kickstarter yet, right? So I'm because all it says but it is, still is going to have the summon monsters. Yeah, it says you build caravans, summon monsters, convert followers in your quest to reign supreme. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Hmm. Uh, and players will truly feel like gods as they shake the very foundations of Egypt. All gameplay, all gameplay, including combat, is streamlined and non-random. Mm. Sounds yeah, like so, sounds so, like sounds chess. Like chess or, yeah, chess it sounds like there won't be any like card drafting because that would be random. Yeah. Huh. I'm like that. I mean, that's the only thing because I, I was going to say this earlier, but I knew we were doing this list because we were talking right. about what it was going to be based off of. Based yeah. On. But that is, which I'd be fine with that is if they did it. Like if you could recruit your monster or whatever sure. and then or use your chest moving if you landed on a like a certain stash, area like maybe a gold, worker place or if, you, yeah. or if you leap over certain things you gain the resources that you leap over yeah or move through how you know move whatever yeah i don't know it, it, but it sounds like i mean and yeah and it's a radically different theme you have vikings feudal japan and now egypt egypt's right. a theme that i don't know jack shit about but i'm always intrigued by it right 
Um, I think the monsters are. I mean, you're going to have to be able to recruit some way and like have those as your own piece. So, like the that that non-random is going to be. I think that might that might be really really cool because the non-randomness means that it's all strategy then. Right. Uh, and I'm looking at something really fast while. Um, because you would think my ancient civilization would uh, re help me remember this. Because, <laughs> it's also been almost 20 years. So. So, I had to look up what an Ankh is, because an Ankh is that symbol. I know what the symbol yeah. was, but I didn't know what it I was trying to remember what it stood for. It says an object of, or design resembling a cross but having a loop instead mm -hmm. of a top arm used yep. in ancient Egypt as a symbol of life. Okay. Hmm. So I, I was just curious because it's called Ankh. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so far, I wonder if, it, if it's a symbol of life, I wonder if there's some type of, like, resurrection mechanic or... Huh. I don't know. I mean, they're all victory point based, both of his games, so there right. has to be something around maybe kind of like a... Man... Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning on. I'm leaning on. I'm thinking this might be more Euroy than I'm, combat. Well, it could be that too. I yeah, because that's. I'm. I'm leaning. I'm. I'm putting all my eggs in the determined movement. Mm -hmm. Like, like something stupid. Like on the bottom of your monster, it's going to have the movement. The way it can move, or on a, it'll probably be on a card. But yeah, <laughs> but it'd be like put on the bottom of it, you know, and yeah, movement, or or so maybe your 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 if you have peon. Soldiers like they may move differently, mm -hmm. and you have them out here, and they don't know who what their movement is. They could move it this way or that. You That's know? true. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's just a thought I was having with this one because. Yeah, I'm intrigued because, I mean, they'll probably mention it whenever they go on Kickstarter. Oh, I'm sure they'll have to. But, but... all right, awesome. Well, so number seven. Number yeah, because that was my number eight. Yep. yep. All right, so my number seven then, is a game we've both, played. This is the one that I've played. Okay. Uh, this is Role Player Adventures. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah, damn, that would have been yeah, on my um, list. I don't know if it'll be out in 2020. It's, it's going to be kind true. of a rush. Because they're about to do their... Yeah, um, you're right. Because of what? If it does, it'll be very end of 2020, mm -hmm. I would assume. Just because yeah. the Fiends of Familiars will be showing up here in a couple months, probably, and then I'll probably jump in their Kickstarter a little That's bit true. after that. So, That's true. Um, I, it was just on my list last year, too. Um, so, uh, Role Player Adventures... Uh, we did a play test session of it. Mm -hmm. um, you, they're gonna have pre-generated characters from role player, or you're gonna be able to use a create a created character that you made during a game of role player, and then you're gonna take them on a storybook adventure. There's, it's, there's actually gonna be a two books. There's gonna be a book that's gonna have the story part and the choices. There's gonna be a book that has like the encounter, like the stuff that happens. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, your encounters and yep. stuff. Um, and there's going to be a little map, and you're going to move your little pawns around, and, and you're going to do the stories. And mm -hmm. how you choose, the options you choose, will determine what takes place. Um, we only did the very first opening scenario, mm -hmm. so we didn't really get And there were still far. quite a few options, and based off of what we did. Oh, yeah, and we went through back into the villages and finished off the yeah. options, because that yeah. was the training one, so I'm sure they get more in-depth yeah. Yeah. than that. But, <clears throat> but um, just in seeing that loose stuff, we could kind of see how it's going to branch out and how they could make it really mm -hmm. interesting. Um, plus, I have faith in... in uh, Thunderworks, you know, I think yeah. they're gonna put in a pretty solid deal. Um, so yeah, I mean, I this has this will probably twenty twenty one because I have a feeling probably, the Kickstarter is gonna be um, at the end of. I could see them doing it the Kickstarter to by like March or April. Really, that's if Fiends comes out in February. That's I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say they take a month off and then they'll put this one because this one's not gonna have as much. Um, it's like gonna be pieces. mostly, it's gonna gonna be mostly cards and yeah. a map in the middle and a and right. books. Yeah. It's not gonna have like all the dice creation. That's and, true because that'll be actually might a little bit because I think because it's, it's gonna be a standalone yeah expansion because you can play it without even having a role player. Oh, you're right. And, but because they're gonna make it where you can because that's why they have the pre-generated characters. That's right. So it may yeah I don't know I. They it has twenty twenty on yeah on well, what they should Geek, do so. if it's just pre generated then you shouldn't have to take your board 
from role player, you should have you write it on a sheet. Right. So the pre generated wouldn't ha- you wouldn't have to have dice. You just hey, here's your sheet. That's true. So I don't know. Yeah, uh, it, I'm very we, we, intrigued. This yeah. one, I'm I'm super optimistic for, but hesitant that it could easily fail. But you have to have the dice for combat and resolution and stuff. Oh, that's right. You know, yeah. So because we use that bag of dice. You're right. We, You're right. So. I don't know. Like I said, BGG added it to 2020. That's why I put it on the list. Mm-hmm. It'll probably be on my list next year's too. But, yep. but um, anything that can expand on a role player and make you do more with your characters, I'll take it. Yep. All right. My number seven is my first IP, I think. Yes. No, Solomon Kane, I guess, is an IP. Yeah. But uh, not really well known. It's, it's, my most, it's my biggest major IP. It's actually from a video game called Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game. This is what... Uh, this is from Steamforge Games. They have done the Resident Evil 2. They did Dark Souls, which Dark Souls unfortunately flopped for me. Um, they've done the card game, which I think... Did you play the card game? The Dark Souls card game? Yes. Okay. Did yeah. you like it? It wasn't bad. Yeah. I mean, it was it was solid. Yeah. I, it's just so expensive. I, for some reason... It is a weirdly it's pricey card game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like 45 bucks for that box. Yeah, budget. Like, and then the expansion's 45 bucks too. And I'm just like, no, yeah, I'm not going to spend that much for I it. I do not blame you for that. <laughs> um, but I very much like the Dark Souls card game. I've heard that there's a errata to kind of the rules of Dark Souls to make it not less, at like less grindy and stuff. I really kick myself for not getting rid of the Dark Souls things just because I want the minis. But Horizon Zero Dawn is a, is a uh, phenomenal video game uh, set in a post... It's post-apocalyptic, but it's post-prehistoric, which is weird because it's like... It's not... You're not Neanderthals. You are... Right. I mean, but you are, but it's, at, it's like a high-tech civilization. Um, so, like, all the dinosaurs are robots. Right. Um, and the game, the video game, is... Like the combat is exhilarating, the story and and uh, is is awesome. The world is beautiful. So when I saw this one, this was I actually backed this before I beat the video game, and oh, yeah. then I beat the video game, and I was like, oh, this is amazing. But I <laughs> uh, so it says it's a semi cooperative tactical action game for one to four players. I will probably only play it solo because the video game solo. Um. Players choose a tribe and class for their hunter and embark on an adventure through the wilds. A variety of machines and unexpected events lurk along the way. Combining innovative and dynamic game mechanisms with strategic deck building, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn offers players a unique experience on each playthrough. Hunters can develop uh, along several skill paths and purchase a wide variety of ammunition and equipment from merchants. So it sounds like it's going to be kind of like... It doesn't sound like it's a campaign. It doesn't sound like it's scenario driven. It sounds more along the lines of Kingdom Death Monster, where you have your quarries and you're trying to gather resources to right. build up your your lodge. Um, if all else fails, the miniatures for this game look fantastic. So I will keep it just for those oh, because yeah, for sure. those could be really really awesome. Because um, if you're still looking for games, oh, you don't have a PlayStation, do you? I'm Never mind. Xbox it's guy. A, yeah, it's only a uh, uh, PS4 exclusive. So. Never mind, but Horizon Zero Dawn, I mean, I, I'm enamored by this world, so Steamform Gate. Wow. Steamforge Games, I've heard that they. <laughs> Steamforge <laughs> <laughs> Steam <for> Gate? <laughs> uh, I've heard that they basically fixed what they did with uh, the Dark Souls uh, game and then th- threw it into this one, so. Gotcha. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm very excited. I mean, clearly it's my number seven, so. So, yep, that's my number seven. All right, my number six was that one cheaty one that I was telling you about earlier. Oh, okay. It's not out retail. It's not really that easy to get right now. You have a copy of it, and it's Orleans Stories. Oh, um, okay. It's, it's by the time it hits, I mean, because you did a pre order for it. It's, yeah. It's, I, 2020 is what I'm calling it because sure. it's not going to be out in wide deal. Right, until right. Then. I mean, yeah, that's because I, I did. Away. So. Um, but, uh, I don't know a whole lot about early on stories other than it adds stories to early on <laughs> <to> that <laughs> cover. Um, but it, uh, it looks like it adds two stories. Yep. Um, it can be played. It's a standalone from what, mm-hmm. uh, what I, the, why didn't you pre-order understand. it? There's some reason why. You... Um, well, I'm kind of my, I have a chapped ass about that a little bit because <laughs> when they sent out That's that hot. deal about the pre, about the pre-ordering. 
it had the DLP or DHP insignia on it, oh. which was from the first Kickstarter. Gotcha. So I'm like, well, I'm going to wait until TMG does their release because then I'll, that way it'll match all the it'll stuff I have, stuff. right? And then, and then I see yours and it says TMG on there. <laughs> so you're over there. It pisses me off because <laughs> I would have done it if I, yep. if I hadn't. So I'll just, I'll get it. It'll come out retail. Because I don't think there was anything special if you pre-ordered it, was there? No, I feel like the only thing I mean, about pre-order is that there were limited cheaper. runs. Yeah, so, I, it'll, so. I'll eventually, it'll eventually yeah. get around. I'll, and who knows, but, it could suck. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Mike, I'll let you do that. For, yeah. <laughs> but, Find out. <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, Orleans Stories, it just adds another way of playing it. Um, my number one game of all time. So uh, whether it sucks or not i don't know yeah but I, i'm but uh it looks like it's i mean it's got the same art and it's got the same stuff so yeah, and tmg made shot. it because i remember you saying that that's what it was because it was from and you're like i was like yeah i don't really care and yeah. then i didn't even notice that tmg was yeah it sucks yeah, it sucks <laughs> all, right. all right my number six is a uh like a sequel or a prequel to one of my favorite games, uh, Deep Madness, and this is called Dawn of Madness. This Kickstarter actually just ended, and here's the theme. Uh, you have awoken in a world that you can't possibly that can't possibly exist. Everywhere you look, you see some fresh nightmares, some new perversion of reality. You don't remember how you got here. In fact, your mind feels as though it has shattered its fractured memory, scattered in the wind. I'm not gonna keep reading. Um, but story-driven cooperative game of survival horror set in the same universe as the breakout hit board game Deep Madness is a completely standalone, unique, and terrifying gaming experience. Um, during the game, players will assume the role of wanderers trapped in a feverish hellscape surrounded by the distorted echoes of their own history. Uh, the choices made throughout the chapter and even the order those choices are made in influence almost every aspect of the game, ensuring that no playthrough will ever be exactly the same. Here's the thing. Actually, that says right here. Uh, Harken back to the survival horror classics like Silent Hill, The Evil Within. That game sucks. And Alan Wake, Dawn of Madness is a mind-bending psychological experience unlike any other attempt in board games. The Evil what? Within was good for the first half of the first game. <laughs> That's true, and I then, guess. And then it became shitty. Yeah, like pretty much up until <sighs> the game kicked off, you're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, that's true. And then the second game, I didn't even bother. I but didn't either. Here's the thing. Dimension Games... Um, I think they've only ever done Deep Madness. Deep Madness is a fantastic horror-themed cooperative game um, with a campaign. This one seems way more story-driven and kind of more, like I mentioned, Silent Hill survival. I am very excited how, how this game uh, can turn out. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that were commenting on the, the Kickstarter, well, not really the Kickstarter itself, but like on Board Game Geek was like, this just seems too complicated, and I'm like, yeah, probably it's probably it's an Ameritrash game. Like they all have kind of convoluted and fiddly rules, but uh, I think Dimension Games did a you know bang out job with Deep Madness. There are a lot of rules to Deep Madness, but nothing's like what. Right, right. So Dawn of Madness just seems like it could be really immersive. I I really am intrigued by the idea of not so much the choices, like because a lot of games have choices that can kind of go one way or another, but the fact that they also mention when you make those choices will affect right. the story. So uh, I have great hopes for Dawn of Madness. That's why it's my number six. All right. My number five is another IP. Okay. Um, it's based on a uh, an app game that I have played tons. That's Fallout Shelter, the board game. Really? Um, I didn't know they were making that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fantasy <laughs> Flight is. Okay. Yeah, um, but, uh, Fallout Shelter is not bad. And you, so you played Fallout mm -hmm. Shelter, yeah. I, I so, played it quite a bit for a while, right. then, I, then I got bored. Right, <laughs> but, the, but this is, so it's a worker placement game, two to four players. Okay. You're building your, I mean, it's, it's you're playing that app game just with bits and stuff. With worker it's, placement? Yeah, it's hmm. worker placement. Um, it says that's a post-nuclear worker placement board game for two to four players. Um, you take on the role of a vault officer, fostering happiness among the citizens of your vault. With the election of a new overseer looming, the officer who can gain the most happiness among the dwellers is sure to lock up the election and attain victory. And that's 
that's it. I mean, I, yeah. I like the game. It's Fantasy Flight, Worker Placement. It's in the Fallout universe, which I love. You do love Fallout. And I like Worker Placement. Yep. You also love Fallout 76. No bullshit. <laughs> I have never you, touched are that you, Are you a Fallout First member? Did you spend $100 for the 76? You do I, know didn't, even, I didn't back it. Oh. Oh, as soon as I found out it was online, <laughs> yeah. I didn't even touch it. Man. Because I was going to go I wish in. I wish you were up to date on that stuff. They announced a, a year subscription for Fallout 76, and it's $100. And it's like, Bethesda, fuck you guys. It's like, you just keep tanking your reputation. I'm not. I'll, I'll <laughs> it got worse. It got worse than when you last looked at it. Yeah. So, so anyway, that's that's my number five. I mean, there's not really huh. a whole lot to say. It's just... I might look into that they, one. They because announced it. It's, if you look it up, I mean, it's... A worker placement game. Because Fallout Shelter, it just got kind of got stale. Because, see, I mean, here's some of the components. That's just a snap. The Fantasy Flight snapshot you know yeah with the different areas that yeah. like the things that then you're just going to create you can build. rooms and make their happiness meter probably go up yeah you have to protect the you know I just, oh that's right i forgot uh, creatures can eat yeah. and they break into your settlement right, and so everyone's I mean, like ah you know the the the, the fallout <laughs> board game was bad it wasn't horrible <laughs> if you played it solo and you okay know, yes <laughs> but they didn't they needed more cards for it i haven't played the expansion this i think is easier to translate to a board game what they're doing as a worker here. placement. Yeah, I think worker I, placement. I agree. Do that. So I, yeah. it's it's it's, it's <clears throat> intriguing. Because yeah, the Fallout board game. Shot. You're right. If you played it solo, it wasn't terrible. But unfortunately, they didn't sell it as solo. Right. So it was it was just you know, I hated it. Yep. So anyway, that's my number five. Fallout Shelter. Awesome. My number five is probably one that you thought would actually be higher, and that is Frosthaven. Okay. So here is my cheat because on Board Game Geek. It says a release date of 2021. I'm that might be the case, but I would assume this is going to go on Kickstarter early-ish, of, and I and I feel like Gloomhaven came out relatively quickly in terms of you know Kickstarter. So this is kind of my cheat. I'm anticipating 2020. If it's 2021, then it'll be anticipated for 2021. But Gloomhaven is my number two game of all time. Game I haven't even gotten close to beat. I am interested in the prequel, but I understand this could be more of a lighter introduction thing that I'll still probably get for the story. But Frosthaven is actually like a whole new world in, or not a new world, new area in that world. And the way I'm imagining is kind of like Oblivion to Skyrim. Right. Um, so, story of a small outpost far to the north of the capital city of White Oak, an outpost barely surviving the harsh weather as well as invasions from forces both known and unknown. A group of mercenaries at the end of their rope will bring back the settlement from the edge of destruction. So, standalone adventure from designer and publisher Gloomhaven it introduces 16 new characters, 3 new races, more than 20 new enemies, more than 100 new items, and a new 100 scenario campaign. Um... It does mention will feature much more to do outside of combat, so it's not. It sounds like it might be more exploration, exploration based instead of your dungeon crawl like Gloomhaven is, um, such as numerous mis- mysteries to solve, a seasonal event system to live through, and player control over how this ramshackle village expands with each new building offering new ways to progress. So it sounds the like hand management system. <laughs> there is no, that is a good. You're just bad at it. <laughs> Uh, it does say, in addition to having the well-known, okay, so well-known combat mechanisms of Gloomhaven, right. so it looks like that's staying. But yeah, like I, to be honest, I wasn't even, I didn't even know anything else about out that there was more to do outside of the dungeon crawl. So that just makes me even more yeah. excited for it. And uh, the cover art looks really neat. I think sixteen new characters. That's what makes Gloomhaven amazing is the unique characters. And so I think it'd be really cool. Because right now, <laughs> Gloomhaven's already established, and you right. can you can do stuff in it, kind of, but you, you're not building it in any way. But, yeah, I think Frosthaven would be really, really cool. I'm super excited. Did you know Isaac Childress also made Forge War? It's an old worker, older worker yes. placement game where you're, like, building the weapons yes. for the king. Yeah, I am really I really want to check that out. I've heard that's a really good worker placement game, but... Anyway, that's it's that's pretty convoluted. That's what I've heard. It's it's pretty. I, I used to own it. Yeah, it's, it's that's <clears throat> what I'm hearing. So, yeah, that's my number five, Frosthaven. All right, my number four is my last cheat on my list. That's not really a <laughs> cheat. It's just it's kind of two things in gotcha. one. It's tainted grail. It's like no, that already <laughs> came out. Uh, this is my Shadows of Brimstone Adventures. So this would be including Gates of Valhalla and the Valley of the Serpent okay. Kings. They're that's standalone. Oh, it's an expansion. Oh, okay. But they're, they're, they're standalone. I gotcha. But they can be played as expansions. Okay. So, 
But yeah. um, but yeah, uh, it's probably wishful thinking. Saying they'd be out in 2020, knowing how flying frog usually does these shadows of brimstone. I thought they were pretty. Were they, were they not quick with the feed them, feed them one? Feed them. Well, the feed them Japan oh, that, one. Oh, that one wasn't. It was a year late. Oh, okay. I mean, it, I had backed it quite a while ago. Gotcha. I mean, they they end up doing a lot of stuff like like the first their first Kickstarter mm-hmm. took about four years to cool. to get to people. Um, because they that was their very first Kickstarter yeah. and they were late getting it so that's why Forbidden Fortress was only a year behind because they, oh. they, they make so much stuff gotcha so this one will probably be uh, Damn. I don't know but anyway um, so uh, yeah Shadow of Brimstone Adventures uh, the, the Gates of Ahala and Valley of Serpent of Kings they each will stand alone but they also if you use them for expansion purposes will uh, build on the, the Gates of Ahala will build onto the Targa world that was already done in the, in the City of Ancients uh, oh, box. Okay. so I'll expand those tiles and give them more more Neat. substance and then the Valley of Serpent Kings brings in the Spanish Conquistadors and and uh, we'll flesh out the, serp- the swamp what was the, the second oh. corset oh so neat so okay because those kind of got stale and and the other the other yeah. worlds were getting fleshed out but then everybody's like well Tarka and the swamps are just kind of same well mm. this this is a way to That's cool. branch them and make That's them cool. more fleshed out with more monsters and everything but Man, you're gonna have like your <laughs> like. Uh, I will anything Shadows of Brimstone comes out. I'm like you could probably just for. never buy any more games and just play Shadows of Brimstone and be content. Probably, well, it's one of those things. Once I have it set up downstairs, whenever I get my basement done, it's gonna be one of those that just stays. It's set a up. stay set up. Like I'm gonna have to have a set, second table just to <laughs> have it set up because yeah, there's so much stuff. But yep, that's it. Awesome, four. awesome. My number four is a um. Okay, sorry, I, I thought it was, is The Great Wall. <laughs> I couldn't think of a lead into that. Is an Awakened Realms game. Um, this seems to be their Euro, Euro attempt, or an attempt at a Euro game. New asymmetric worker soldier placement game with engine building themes and a twist in the form of constantly attacking AI, which is a Mongolian horde, that requires players to sometimes cooperate in order to defeat it. Um... Players will control ancient clans in China trying to defend invading Mongolian hordes and build a great wall. While every player will want to win by earning VP, which is honor, they also need to sometimes cooperate to defend against the hordes. Here's the thing. Awaken Realms did Nemesis, which was semi-cooperative and worked really well. I feel like that they might have hit they might have figured it out. So right. Great Wall could also be a really good semi-cooperative with also being a worker placement Euro game. I will forever probably back every Awakened Realms game that comes out because they have not steered me wrong except for one time, which was Lords of Hellas, which was not really a bad game. just wasn't for me. Right. But everything else has been, like, top tier and something that I just love. What worries me the most about Awakened Realms, though, at this point, is they are putting a lot of games on Kickstarter. The Edge is not complete. Nemesis is done. They're starting to... Uh, this War of Mine is clearly like done. Like maybe a little bit. But here's the thing. They're, all their games are better than Simon. <laughs> well, no. I, 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 I know, but yes. Yeah, it, like, know, the Great Wall went on Kickstarter. Other Fields just finished. So, now they're not releasing simultaneous Kickstarters, but mm-hmm. they're not fulfilling. Like, The Edge, I don't know where the fuck that stuff's at. That was yeah, Awakened Realms. Sure people were getting that. And they might be, but this might be maybe a second printing or a second mm-hmm. running. I need that's to. True. I just need to email them and right. find out what where that's at. But... I know they are fulfilling, and they're relatively quick. Like, Tainted Grail, back, I backed mm. this year, and I already got first, like my first wave, so then wave two and all that stuff will be coming. But, yeah, the Great Wall, I mean, something that a lot of people might have been bringing up is that the wall itself is actually, I think it's like plastic and things like that, but the hordes are on the other side. So from a board standpoint, it might be a little difficult because you can't see the other mm. side unless you're we're playing like this. So, I'm... I mean, I don't really care about that too much, but like that might be a fiddly problem. No, if it's just a two-player game, just make the wall like that. But I don't think it's two players. It's one to four. Oh, really? Okay. Never yeah. Mind. Um, I think it's one to four. Yeah, one to four players. So. Gotcha. So yeah, but I mean, I guess if you're playing one, 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 then you just make it this way. I'm sure it'll be fine. But yeah, and then I got the one with the uh, <coughs> with the miniatures. So yeah, it's it's Awakened Realms. Make it's the wall clear. That would be so weird. <laughs> you could it's see nice. through it. Um, but yeah, so that's my number four. Great Wall. My number three, I thought might be on your list, but you haven't said it yet, so I don't know. Um, 
its title blades, Heroes of the Reef. No, um, it was I, it was supposed to be out. It was supposed to be out this year. <clears throat> That's why, um, and it's getting close to coming out. I think they were shooting for like February. Mm -hmm. I think is when it's coming out. Yeah. So real quick, because you thought it was gonna be on my list, how I made my list was I went on Board Game Geek and did 2020. Mm -hmm. So it probably didn't show up because it was 2019. I did the same thing, but what I did first was I went to my 2018 list and see the stuff that hadn't come out. That would have been put that yep. first, and yep. then that would have been <clears throat> been a good um, thing to do. So anyway, Title Blades. Here's the reef. It's it's from Druid City Games, mm -hmm. um, and it's just beautiful. Yeah, I mean the the game is just outstanding looking, um, clean everything. If you went, you did the deluxe and everything that yep. you showed with the so you're gonna have a little dice bowl that looks like the arena mm -hmm. and everything, and pretty much the theme of it, real quick, is that uh, you are. You are a contestant, and you're, you've signed up for a tournament, and you're wanting to try to become one of the tidal blades or the, the guards of the mm -hmm. this area. Um, so, in order to succeed, you you're in this tournament, and you have to go place to play. You're just doing dice actions, pretty more yeah. or less. Your your dashboard is going to have dials on it and different stuff that's going to keep track of resources, and you're going to be playing off of that. Um, it takes the tournament takes place over five days and nights, so there's going to be a uh, time of day part to it too. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's, this is one of those automatic all in as soon as I saw it because it's just so damn beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and they've, I think they, there's an expansion coming already with it. Yeah, um, it's all started. it's all going to be game trade. Yeah, and everything. So it's gonna. Whole, yeah. even the expansion mm -hmm. will be able to fit in there it's 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 gonna be nice and this is a company that's kind of up and coming you know with sorcerer city and and they've been doing oh, some yeah. good kickstarters and stuff which i haven't got a chance to play that one yet but but uh but yeah it's it's gonna be a good one yep that probably would have been on my list had i remembered that it hadn't yeah. come out yet all right, my number three is another crossover so that would make it our fourth crossover i said five you did say five. There's not going to be five. We might split the split the difference because I said three. I didn't think um, Titans would have been on your list. So what are you, what are we what are you calling a crossover right now? Etherfields. So Etherfields, Titans, Onk, and Time of Legends, Destinies. Okay. Um, but my number three is Etherfields. Uh, yeah. Clearly, this is my second <laughs> Awaken Realm game. Um, like you mentioned, it's a, what they're calling a dream crawler. Uh, surreal and artistic crafted world and follow one of a kind. <coughs> Co-op solo campaign adventure. Everything you do will change the strange rhythm Etherfield's dream world follows and wildest fantasy is possible here. I mean, if if we're talking about, if they're, if they're really, because this is all cards, like as well, um, similar yep. to, to Tainted Grail, but seems more of like that seventh continent feel where instead of like combat or anything, it's more of a deduction like exploration mm -hmm. kind of in a, in a super unique world and that's what awaken realms is doing like they just have these awesome views of of theme that they man, they're just so they're so good and i know they have something that has to do with masks that give you like abilities but you can't really reveal what they are um like really weird mechanics but I don't think it's like scenario driven or story right. driven, kind of like the storybook that Tainted Grail and this War of Mine has. But it is that weird exploration. So I'm very intrigued because I went all in for mm -hmm. other fields as well. So I just going to have a whole lot of different kind of dreams to explore. But yeah, everything you said and it's Awakened Realms. So that's my number three. All right. My number two <clears throat> um, is Dice Throne Adventures. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Dice Throne is an awesome one v one dice attack game. Um, what got me into big time though was when they announced Dice Throne Adventures, and what that does is it turns it into a cooperative or even solo play <coughs> adventure style. Um, so you uh, take your character deal, <coughs> and you're going to go through and actually. Um, you go through the adventure. There's going to be your main boss. There's going to be mini bosses along mm -hmm. the way. As you <coughs> as you gain experience in gold, you can spend that on things. Um, 
to upgrade your abilities on your board and everything. Um, there's a version that has the minis. You have painted minis. Oh yeah. On the board, I didn't. So yeah, I figured yeah. I just use the standees because the the game is the dice. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of a dungeon crawl mm -hmm. in itself because you have the cards out here that flip over as you go. So there's going to be different. The, the rooms are going to do different things. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just it was what I what I wanted for this one v one game. It's kind of like with Sorcerer. Oh, Sorcerer's okay. doing. A solo cooperative right. deal with that one v one game. Yeah, that's perfect for me because one v one games I can play, mm -hmm. but then I want to have that solo co op. Yeah, deal too. And when you throw that in, and I didn't have any of the dice room stuff, so I did all of season one, season yeah. two. They're all adventures, in. all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> it's just going to be a really neat. Roxley Games is who makes it, and they're all they're the in. same ones that did Santorini. Yes, awesome. Um, so they. They just, they're good yeah. at what they do, you know, and, and this has been their big, this is their big ticket, mm -hmm. the, the Dice Throne. Um, and there'll be a season three coming out. Oh, wow. I didn't point. know there was going to be season three. Yeah. Um, so, Dice Throne is one that I missed out on. I really want to try it because I think I would love, I like one for one head-to-head -head games. And if, if they're unique, like, like, uh, like characters. Characters feel like their character. Yeah. You know, like they have an ultimate, so if you get all six of the yeah. one six. And hell, that might be my replacement for Guardians, because Plaid Hat sucks! <laughs> yeah, these guys play, they, they do all kinds of events at, at uh, Gen Con and, really? and stuff. Really? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. My number two is technically a... It's not really a cheat, because I know the Kickstarter is coming out next year, but it does not have a board game geek... Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't have a, a a thing on Board Game Geek, but I do have the art, the art book called the ISS Vanguard. This is a third Awaken Realms game <laughs> that is on my list. Basically, one, two, four, four, three, and two were Awaken Realms games. Um, essentially, all I am gleaming from this because this because when this War of Mine. No, 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 it wasn't this war. I think when I got my Nemesis pledge, they had the art book for Tainted Grail. And I was like, oh, that seems pretty cool. And then with Tainted, I got my Tainted Grail stuff, this was in it. Mm -hmm. So this is so they give out free art books. <laughs> uh, essentially, this is kind of a exploration. Like it says, ex uh, is a major new upcoming board game from Awakening uh, Realms. It will take you on amazing adventures through the stars as the crew of the first... Very first human spaceship with the capability to reach other galaxies. You will explore new planets, gather resources, collect unknown life forms, and try to survive in often hostile environments. Explore the stars, develop your character, prepare an expedition, and then Vanguard. Like, it just seems like that you're going to... It kind of reminds me of, like, Tainted Grail, but mm -hmm. in space. So you're going to be going through, like... That's these cool. these uh like visiting different planets, exploring different planets, gathering resources, developing your character, and trying to survive. And basically, Tainted Grail was my best game of the year, and I'm absolutely in love with it. So take that, change it up a little bit to make it more of a survival, like a space, a sci-fi survival with different planets, and I am all sold. But like some of the artwork in, in this is just fantastic. The artwork for all their games is is really really good. So I mean, just bright and vibrant. So yeah, yeah I like that. Like, so yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, they really don't have a whole, whole lot of information on it. The the Kickstarter forums that I follow on Board Game Geek just has that un, unpublished prototype um, with the Kickstarter date of twenty twenty. So. Uh, as far as I know, that might be their next one. It'll probably the one after Great Wall. Well, Great Wall, the Kickstarter's done. Right, but I mean, after it filters through yeah. the pledge manager. And yeah, stuff. oh yeah, then they'll probably add in, um, <coughs> add in ISS Vanguard. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very excited for it. So, that's my number two. All right, my number one is our fifth crossover. Is it really? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ultra Quest. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, that's your number one, huh? It is. I I've been. Um, I got a chance to demo this. When oh, I was okay. At, at, at Origins. Origins. Gotcha. I got to talk with the Saddlers. Okay. You know, and, and you know, we got to play that. It was just a great. It it was so much 
Hero Quest, and that because, mm. like I said, that was Hero Quest, my very first board game I ever owned. My cousin bought it for me when I was like, I don't know how old I would have been back then, but <laughs> but um, it was just a total wow moment, you mm. know. And then I, when this Kickstarter started, and I saw the board, I'm like, wait a second, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then I saw the 3D build model buildings, and everything. I'm like, are they legally able to do this? <laughs> you know, because it looks so much like it, right? Um, <clears throat> it's not the same style of game, obviously, but, mm -hmm. but, um, it just looks so good. You know, they have, um, it's going to have the double two boards, you know, the t different layouts. Cause that was a concern at one point early in the campaign was that there was going to be the one layout, mm -hmm. but now there's either going to be a second board or it's going to be a double sided. Double sided. Board. Okay. Um, I didn't do the neoprene, which I should have, but I don't um, remember if I did or not, but, uh, got all the expansion every anything else they added on with the characters and everything it's just so much replayability <clears throat> the yeah. one thing that i wanted to do with this game that i didn't was uh they they suggested getting a set of those colored rings oh for, for each so you could go ahead and have all of your miniatures set yep i didn't i figured i'll just have to pop them off and i don't remember because you were gonna have to buy like seven or eight sets oh, of those yeah. things yeah, extra to I do it I did I, that either. but anyway it's it is a, a supreme gonna be an awesome game yeah you know um and i think if <clears throat> i think the expansion made it uh we can play it solo too i think that was one reason why i jumped all in is because there was a solo. Can you play Brook City solo? Yes. Okay. Um, well, you probably could play it solo anyway because it's cooperative. Well, right. It's best with two, so yeah. Yeah, you can. It's just some of them are yeah. nitsy, but yeah. So it's it's going to be a good one, I think, for sure, with the hand management. and You just can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. Art's awesome. Yeah, I'm a, I'm excited. I'm excited. Alters doing different stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's gonna be a good one. Awesome. Can you guess what my number one is? It is a Simon game, actually. As a I Simon as I game? shat all over them this entire list. My number one is a game. You probably won't guess it, but whenever they announced it, I went all in immediately. Uh. It's not a crossover. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll know it when you say the name of it, but I'll. Bloodborne, the board oh, game. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I should. I yeah. So for Blood... some reason I hear that and I think Steam Forge or something. That, like that, that is fair. Of, yeah. yeah. So this does have Eric Lang <clears throat> on it, um, and it is published by Simon. Has a six point four. That's really interesting, considering that the game's not fucking suck. out yet. Suck. <laughs> Here's the thing: if this game, so Bloodborne <laughs> is my favorite video game. Um, right. And it's which is weird because at the time I hated. Uh, uh, from software games because mm -hmm. I fucking couldn't beat them. And then I played Bloodborne with uh, Devin. He's the guy on my show regularly. Um, so if I was if I would get mad, then he would play. And then so we so, so I was able to beat the game with him. And then that's right. what kind of got me hooked. And then since then I beat it like on New Game Plus Four. And I'm just so Bloodborne is a phenomenal world set in like a Gothic Cthulhu Victorian era uh, where you play a hunter. Uh, during the uh, during the hunt, and you are going out and you are killing beasts, mm -hmm. and there's bosses and a bunch of bosses. And this game went off on like stretch goals and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure they have every. I think they have every major boss except DLC, which is unfortunate for me because I'm my favorite bosses to fight are in the DLC. But they might release an expansion for it. But the campaign-based action-adventure game, players take on the role of hunters, working together against the game to uncover the mysteries hidden within the city of Yarnum and beyond. Featuring unique trick weapons, each with various forms and powers, because in the game, your weapon... Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot of weapons, but the weapons can turn into others. Uh, hunters have to think quickly and adapt their tactics to overcome the multitude of foes that stand in their way, learn their behavior, exploit their weaknesses, and strike them down. So... This game could be like a blessing or a disaster in disguise because since I'm such a huge fan of Bloodborne, it yeah. could fall short. But you still have the minis, though. Exactly. That's that's, <laughs> the, that's my only consolation. If the game sucks, no matter what, I'm gonna keep it for its minis because it's Bloodborne, and I think the minis are gonna be awesome. But 
they have so many just bosses in different locations that are in the in the video game that I'm really really hoping it's gonna be it's gonna be good and and different enough for a you know tile based right. you know dungeon crawl that isn't grindy like Dark Souls right because that's what killed Dark Souls the the boss fights were amazing in in the board game but like everything up to that was grindy and boring here. It's like I'll probably end up playing it solo anyway, but if anything, I'll have the boss minis right. and that'll just make me happy. Yep. So so that's it, everyone. That is our top 20 anticipated games uh, for 2020. Um, give or take a few cheats. But, yeah. um, but let us know what games you are excited for in the comments below. Other than that, uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this, and if you like this video, then click the subscribe button below to enjoy any video that I put out. And right next to that subscribe button is a little bell, click that so you get notified of whenever I actually upload these videos. If you want to support the channel, you can definitely visit my Patreon page, the link is in the description below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.